in this video we are going to see about the survey procedures in dentistry first let's start with the definition of survey what is a survey survey is a non experimental type of research that attempts to gather information about the status quo for a large number of people by describing present conditions without directly analyzing their causes so Surveys are a very traditional way of conducting a research. There are various other methods to conduct surveys or research, but this is a very traditional way which is simpler and uh, easy to conduct, and it is used to establish the prevalence and incidence rates. And it is not always a very practical design. It has some restrictions to it. There are two types of survey. One is descriptive, and the another uh, type is analytical. And both the types are subclassified into cross-sectional and longitudinal study design. Cross-sectional is a type of research which is conducted at one point of time, whereas longitudinal study is a uh, study which is carried out for a longer duration of time and it moves forward always from cause to an effect. The various steps involved in survey are first it starts with establishing the objectives designing the investigation selecting our samples conducting the examination analyzing the data drawing conclusions from it and publishing the results these are the various steps of survey when we look at the uses of survey those are it helps in monitoring the trends in oral health and the disease it helps us to develop various policies out of our outcomes and uh, for program evaluation and also to assess dental needs and to provide visibility for all those dental issues the first most step in the survey is establishing the objective our objective should be clear and our null hypothesis should be formulated and it should describe the situation what is to be measured these things should be clear in our objective the next step in survey is designing the investigation our investigation should start with the survey protocol we should have a protocol on what we are going to do and how we are going to do and budgeting should be done prior uh, to starting the survey and emergency care and referral plans should also be there there are various methods of data collection which includes health interview health examination health records and a questionnaire survey questionnaire survey is the most commonly used method which is subclassified into face to face interview or telephonic interview or mailed interview these are all the types of questionnaire survey so the types of questionnaire survey which i had mentioned is health interview survey where the health needs of the patients is addressed through face to face interview and health examination survey uh, for an example a national health and nutrition examination survey has been conducted before this is an example of national health examination survey then we have health record survey based on the records or statistics that is available we record this and questionnaire survey either it is conducted directly through face to face interview or through a mailed questionnaire or through the next step in survey is selecting the sample selecting the sample is very important because the sample which we select for a survey should be uh, selected or recruited from the general population uh, it should the sample should be in such a way that the outcome obtained from the sample could be generalized to the general population so uh, any sample that is recruited uh, from the population Uh, should be similar to the characteristics of the general population so uh, it is very crucial to select a sample considering all these criteria sampling techniques could be classified into two major categories either probability or non probability sampling probability samplings are random method of samplings or uh, it is subclassified into simple random stratified random systematic cluster and multi stage random sampling whereas non probability sampling method is not a random method it is subclassified into convenient uh, or purposive sampling quota sampling and snowball sampling these sampling techniques are used to select the samples and Uh, uh, categorize them into various groups or sub classifications the sampling technique is covered in a different video 
after selecting our samples, we are moving on to the next step in survey, which is conducting the examination. There are various things that should be kept in mind while conducting the examination. Those include obtaining approval from the higher authorities, um, collecting all the necessary instruments and supplies and keeping them ready prior to starting the survey. Infection control is very important and the examination area, uh, the protocol should be followed for it. And training and calibration of all the examiners should be done earlier. Emergency care and referral pro protocol should also be carried out. There are four methods of examination which includes type 1 examination which is also called complete examination, type 2 limited examination, type 3 is inspection and type 4 is screening. Most commonly used types are type 3 and type 4 when it comes to survey. Moving on to the next part which is screening. What is screening? Screening is the search for unrecognized disease or defects by means of rapidly applied tests, examinations or procedures in apparently healthy individuals. And these are the four types of examinations and the difference between uh, each type. Then uh, when it comes to training and calibrating the examiners prior to conducting a survey, we have to follow certain steps to uh, prepare our examiners for conducting a survey. And uh, the training and calibration is conducted using various examiners through various methods, which includes intra-examiner and inter-examiner reliability and variability. And this is carried out at various settings and at various intervals. And it is measured by Kappa statistics. And uh, when Kappa statistics value is uh, close to 1, it shows perfect agreement and when it is close to minus 1, it shows complete disagreement in which case the examiner reproducibility and validity is very less which should be uh, again repeated. Moving on to the next step, analyzing the data. The data can be analyzed either manually or it can be uh, you know, uh, fed into the computer and it can be analyzed or uh, it can be presented through tables and graphs after calculating it. So these are the various steps in analyzing the data and finally drawing conclusions out of it. Perfect interpretation of the data should be done based on the analysis and it should be properly uh, written so that the readers or the viewers can proper, properly understand it equally. After uh, writing or uh, describing the results part, it is very important to publish the results so that uh, it reaches the public domain and everybody will get utilized out of it. So the statement and purpose of the survey should be mentioned followed by the materials and methods, results, discussion, conclusion, summary and the recommendations should all be there in the publication process where uh, it is easy for everybody to follow it up. So a basic oral health survey is, uh, uh, is an example of a survey which was conducted uh, in India and this survey aimed to collect basic information about oral disease status and treatment needs for planning or monitoring changes in disease levels. And there is a book on it which we can refer to. And the objectives of that was to provide a full picture about the oral health status of the population to monitor changes in oral health disease and age related changes based on index age groups and past and present uh, case activities. Then we also have Pathfinder survey uh, which was carried out uh, and it was uh, it was very practical economic survey sampling methodology. Uh, they follow stratified cluster sampling technique. It includes most important subgroups only and the index age groups and uh, it has less expenses. These are the five index age groups which we consider whenever we start a study or survey. Um, it has various reasons based on the previous surveys and uh, National Pathfinder survey. They have arrived at this. Those index age groups include 5 years, 12 years, 12 to 15 years, 35 to 44 years range and then finally 65 to 74 years of age for elderly population. So these are all the index age groups which is very important. 
So these are all the five index age groups classification, the difference and the reason for uh, including each and every year or each and every index age group. There are two types of Pathfinder survey. One is pilot survey and the other one is national Pathfinder survey. When we look at the difference between the pilot survey and national Pathfinder survey, in pilot surveys, the most important subgroups are only taken into account. Usually one or two index age groups are taken. Uh, we consider 12 years and one more index age group, for instance, and uh, it is uh, useful in uh, calculating only the minimum amount of data that is required to planning a survey, to start a survey. Whereas national level surveys are very large, they include three or more index age groups and it is suitable for collecting large number of data for planning purposes and monitoring oral health programs in, in the country. This is a simple calculation that is used for calculating the number of subjects that should be included for national pathfinder survey at an urban setting also in the rural setting. Yes, now why is it important at UG level to know about all these uh, data? To have knowledge about the prevalence of common dental conditions in India and also to have knowledge about the community-based preventive measures that are available. Also to educate patients concerning the etiology and prevention of oral diseases and encourage them to assure responsibility for their oral health. Now, why is it important at PG level? to prevent and control oral diseases and promote oral health through organized community efforts, which is very important and also the definition and also to identify all the oral health problems affecting the community and find solutions using multidisciplinary approach to plan and perform all necessary treatments, prevention and promotion of oral health at the individual and community level. That is why it is important at PG level. Now let me just recall the things that we have seen so far. We have a manual for oral health survey which covers the findings that has been um, collected and uh, the application procedure, planning and implementation, all the data and results of the oral health survey which was conducted. It's called basic oral health survey manual. And pilot study, we have seen about the pilot study is a type of survey calibrating and training of the examiner is important to analyze various levels of disease problems and survey designs. Then uh, we have seen about the national uh, health survey and uh, it covers all the subgroups, three or more index age groups for collecting data, planning and monitoring. So the, when we look at the prevalence rate in India and Tamil Nadu, this is based on the survey uh, which I had showed earlier. We have various uh, index age groups and various uh, uh, rates of prevalence. And this is the prevalence rate in India and Tamil Nadu about dental caries. And uh, guides for estimating the level of disease, we have three levels of prevalence, low level, moderate level and high level of prevalence. And uh, this is given by WHO, this is called WHO oral health assessment form. We have a form for children and we have a form for adult. Uh, this was given in the year 2013. Uh, this is modified. Uh, there is a previous version also. We re usually record this WHO performa for all the basic surveys or research prevalence studies. So these are all the references which you can use for your uh, survey or research. National Oral Health Survey Manual, then uh, Sobhan Peter Book and Park and Park Textbook. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video. I hope this helps you in planning your survey or writing your exam on your, on your uh, survey topic. Thank you so much.